Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this week's episode, we'll be traveling to Colorado to visit Tim in his self-built tiny home. With housing in Boulder County on the rise, Tim was looking for a way to save money and escape the city. And what better way to do that than by building your own tiny home? During our tour, he'll show us how he saved money on certain aspects of the build, all while creating a unique off-grid home away from urban life. But before we jump right in, make sure that you're subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. Hi everyone, my name's Tim and welcome to my tiny home. I'm originally from the interior of Alaska. Growing up in Alaska was very fun. I got to spend a lot of time outdoors. I just got to learn how to do things with my hands, I think, more than other people get to. And so I'm really fortunate for that experience. I started thinking about tiny homes and living in new different spaces really ever since I was a kid. I think it just finally started making sense. You know, once I started paying my own rent, the total cost to build the tiny house, as far as money invested, is about $42,000. So building the house took approximately three months. Um, we, it was <laughs> a very intense three months. I think the, the, the design process, as far as a DIY house goes, is like learning all the stuff you don't know and then tackling learning that. So here we are on the outside of the tiny house. It's about 32 feet overall length, eight feet wide, 13 feet max on the tall side, as far as height goes, uh, and weighs about 16,000 pounds. So the house is sitting on a triple axle gooseneck trailer, and right on top of the gooseneck is where the bedroom is. You can see we've uh, used metal to cover the house. Frankly, I chose metal because it's really robust and the color's gonna stay. And I know it's not gonna just start leaking because there's a bunch of caulk on it. So it's all mechanically shedding all the water in the snow, which was really important for me. And then on, on top of the roof here, we have nine uh, 315 watt solar panels that make up the 2.7 kilowatt system we have. And it keeps the house powered year round. So the windows on the tiny house, all of them but two, are, uh, are actually recycled, or, or they were surplus ones, so we got on a discount. So if we move over here to this wood siding, um, there's kind of an accent wall. <laughs> it, uh, it looked nice for about six months, and then it started deteriorating because it's really thin wood and it's not rated to be outside. Um, so that is something, wouldn't recommend quarter inch tongue and groove for any exterior siding. <laughs> So here you can see we have a little 4x8 deck. The idea for the deck was just uh, I wanted to be able to walk out uh, no matter what season. So if it's really snowy, I still want to be able to walk out and reliably get into the back of the shed without having to deal with anything underneath or like shovel snow out of the way or anything. Um, and that's really the main reason why I wanted to do the deck is for better access to the back of the house. And then I can stand up on this deck and get this glorious view out to the side. So here at the back of the house, we have the gear shed. The electrical's back here. Main inverter, solar charge controller, all the tools, all the stuff required to live a fun life, you know? All right, let's come on in. So this is the inside of the tiny house. One of the big priorities in the design of the house was to keep all the space that we have as open as possible, just to maximize how big it feels inside. So in the kitchen here, uh, there was a couple key design considerations uh, that kind of uh, shaped how this kitchen looks. So one is uh, a nice double basin sink. Having plenty of prep space was also important. And then we have this big propane burning stove and oven. I really wanted to have the availability to bake and to cook a lot of food on top of the burners. The countertops are pretty interesting. Uh, this is actually uh, multi-sections that are glued together of this butcher block uh, that I found off of Craigslist again. Um, and it was considerably cheaper per foot to do it this way and then to uh, sand and finish it by hand um, than it was to just buy the, the proper sizes of butcher block. And then also the same material is the material that is up here on the open shelves. 
Instead of the more traditional closed cabinets with doors, we opted for some open shelving. While there are some drawbacks, such as stuff gets dusty a lot faster, I really prefer this because it takes up so much less total volume than a whole cabinet would, and I personally feel like it keeps the space nice and open. The backsplash is really fun. These are actually just pieces of glass with a faux geode stick back on the back of it. And I uh, just took 10, 10 tile pieces to do the whole kitchen. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really good accent color and I love it a lot. And it's easy to clean as well. Over here we have the fridge. It's a pretty decent size. Right below the fridge is the dishwasher. So in here, it's just a single pull out drawer. You can fill it up. When it's just me, I tend to just try to wash my dishes right after I use them. So I don't have to have as many out on the shelf. So right across from the kitchen, we're gonna head over here. This desk works really well for me. As you can see, I can actually uh, adjust the height of this desk. Um, so if I'm trying to get some work done and my back isn't feeling very good, I can actually raise this desk up and now I can use it as a standing desk, which is phenomenal. Underneath this adjustable bar top, uh, we have the propane heater. This heater is temperature controlled, so I can set it to you know a given temperature um, and it will just use all the propane it needs until it reaches that temperature and it will maintain it. This is the turntable stand I just made. It has room for plenty of records in here. And one thing that I'm uh, trying to hold myself to is that I'm not allowing myself to have more records than what fits in this space for records. So, uh, you know, we'll see how well that turns out. So right behind this door is the bathroom. And this door is actually old growth uh, Douglas fir from Oregon. It was salvaged from an old mansion that was being demolished. How you get up to the bathroom is actually with the step down here and you can actually just poke the bottom of it with your foot and then you can just step on up into the bathroom. As you can see, we're about two feet off the main floor height uh, and that's because the 130 gallon water tank um, <clears throat> is actually right underneath the bathroom uh, along with the hot water heater. For the shower, I wanted a nice big space where I could stand up, so naturally the shower is on the tall side of the bathroom. As you can see in the shower, there is no curtain right now, and that's just because we have uh, two little hooks that you can take the shower curtain out, hang it up when you're using it, and then once it's dry, you can fold it, put it away. Also in the shower, you'll notice that we have this Nature's Head uh, composting toilet. The main floor of the bathroom that I'm standing on now is a penny floor. And the way we did that was uh, glued a bunch of pennies down and then we grouted it uh, black and then we covered it with a thin layer of epoxy. I think we did two layers of it to make it all flat. In the center here, there's a fun star kind of design. And a lot of these coins were actually from, uh, from a childhood coin collection, which is really fun. And then there's one token from a really cool spot in my hometown called Nukluk Land. So on the other side, we have just a little bit of space here, some countertop that is right above the washing machine down here. Some people will go with the combo washer dryer unit. The only thing I've ever heard about that is that it doesn't wash it right and it doesn't dry it fully. If I'm gonna choose out of those two things, uh, I'd rather have clean clothes. In the winter, I'll hang my clothes up in here. I have some extra hooks and bars and stuff. Um, but in the summer and most of the year, I just hang it up on the clothesline outside. So also what we have in here is this cool hammered copper sink. This was also another Craigslist find. That's about it for the bathroom. Let's head on down to the living room. So here we are in the living room. Behind me here uh, is one of the main features of the living room, which is the closet. Now the closet has a lot of hanging storage. That was something very important when designing a place to live in. So on this opposite wall here, uh, we have this couch. Initially, this couch was not in here. We had a DIY couch that we had approximately half a day to complete. I quickly got very annoyed with, uh, with the couch and I finally had the time to rip it out. And then I got this little love seat and it uh, fits the space quite well. Also, what we have on the back wall here uh, is this window AC unit. Moving on up, we have this heat recovery ventilation uh, unit. Uh, it's just a standard unit from Home Depot. And what it does is it pulls out old air and it pulls in new air and it passes it over a heat core so that you have minimal heat loss. So in the winter, you're not just sucking in cold air and blowing out hot air. You can at least conserve some of that heat uh, while getting fresh air in here without having to crack a window or something. Above that is the projector. The projector is really fun. It is just uh, kind of a DIY mount up there. And I have a screen that you can actually pull out. So let's head on up to the bedroom. So here we are in the bedroom. As you can see, 6-1, I can stand all the way up, which was uh, the main key design consideration for the bedroom. So I was doing some math when we were calculating for framing and, uh, and I realized the front hitch portion of the gooseneck uh, on the trailer was too tall. 
uh, for the final height of the bedroom. And uh, I think it was too tall by about 10 inches. So I had some, uh, some good friends and some redneck ingenuity and uh, we shortened it. So another cool feature that's in the bedroom is this big skylight. I will say it was a bit of a gamble and it didn't initially pay off. I think I had to install and reinstall the first skylight that we got, which was used, which was not a good idea. Wouldn't recommend that. I, I think if you're gonna get a skylight, get it as new as possible. I had to install it and reinstall it probably three times before it seemed like it was holding water out. And then about six or seven months later, it started leaking. I will say if you've never installed a skylight before, uh, expect a little bit of a battle. So this bed is a queen size bed. The bed also is on a platform that has some gas struts that help you lift it up. Um, and there's actually, the, all underneath here is just storage. Having this space after I graduated to not only, I, I had less pressure to make money because I didn't have to spend as much in rent. And for me personally, I, it, there's just so many fewer stressors here versus like staying in an apartment. It's really allowed me to take the time that I've needed to just breathe, to just exist, to just appreciate living. Like I had a lot of fun building the house. I would definitely build something like this again. But like I said earlier, not in three months. That was the killer. Like that timeline was, was, was crazy. It's just like crunching things together and like, it was, yeah, it was definitely a push to get it all done. One thing I hope people take away from this is that, is that you can live how you want to live. You know, you are capable of making a space that fits your needs. And that is, that is not going to look like anybody else's space. Thanks for watching this week's tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.